Welcome and thanks for joining us. I'm Radhik Kolumbage. I'm the head of corporate marketing at WSO2. And I'm joined today by our CEO and founder, Dr. Sanjeeva Viravarna, and the head of our identity and access management business unit, Geetika Kure. Guys, thanks for joining us. It's uh, It's been a a big year for WSO2. We've uh, recently announced the return of our global user conference, WSO2 Con. Uh, we're having the largest coding challenge that WSO2 has ever run, where the winner takes away their very own Tesla Cybertruck and or $100,000 uh, as a grand prize. Uh, and the cherry on the icing on the cake is a major update to our flagship identity product, uh, identity server. So a lot's going on uh, in the last, uh, last few months. Uh, I'm keen to get into the details of Identity Server, but before we do, Sanjeev, I have a question for you. Uh, WSO2 has a diverse portfolio of products spanning from API management to integration to cloud-native um, develop, app development, uh, and most importantly, identity and access management. Can you give us some details and your thoughts on where IAM fits in the big picture um, for WSO2, but obviously also for other organizations in their digitization efforts? Sure. So identity, identity is a very fundamental bit of technology in today's world uh, for many reasons. First is, of course, security. Yeah, we, in, in our modern digitized universe that we live in, when we do digital interactions with a customer, you have to know who you are dealing with. So that is the identity access management problem, basically. How do I know? First is authentication, which is know that this is Radhik or this is Geeks on the other side. And now with all this advent of deep fakes and all the AI capabilities, this has become even more important because just knowing a username password or even just doing a facial recognition, you know, there's all kinds of complexity that has come in now. So identity is fundamentally important uh, from, from the security perspective. The other is from the personalization perspective. Because if I know it's you, if you are a high-end customer of a bank, when you walk into the bank, they will tell, they will, the, somebody who knows you recognizes you will come and talk to you and give you personalized service. That experience needs to be delivered in digital experiences as well, somehow. And so incorporating the knowledge of the person in deeply into the business systems of the company are necessary in order to deliver that. So we see identity as a critical part of the digital platform technologies we create. Uh, Keithika, your team has put a lot of energy into building what we believe is the best version of identity server that we've ever released. Uh, can you give us some insights and the highlights of, of what's, uh, what's in identity server for users? Yes. Um, so identity server 7 builds on our latest, our previous version, which is identity server 6.1. Uh, and I can sort of bucket uh, the improvements that we are bringing with identity server 7 into sort of four buckets. First, um, first is the improved developer experience through our new UIs and so on and so forth. Uh, the second being uh, us introducing our B2B features or B2B SIAM or B2B customer identity access management capabilities that are now being brought to Identity Server 7. They were first previously available only on our SaaS uh, cap, uh, offerings, which is Ascardio, or multi tenanted SaaS, and private identity cloud, our single tenanted SaaS, which is only available there. Now we're excited to bring those B2B SIAM capabilities onto Identity Server 7. Uh, and third, uh, we have support now for financial grade APIs or FAPI 1.0. We'll talk about that soon. And finally, uh, we've improved our API-based authentication capabilities. Uh, so those are uh, some of the sort of high-level uh, sort of capabilities that we bought in with Identity Server 7. It sounds awesome. Um, you mentioned first up that um, we would put a lot of effort into enhancing the developer experience. Um, can you go into some of the capabilities and features that uh, have been built around that area? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Identity Server is loved by our customers, our prospects, our open source community because the product already provides a lot of flexibility for developers, especially when it comes to them extending the products using its APIs and extension points to basically build out whatever experience that they require for their customers and users. Uh, you know, Sanjeev mentioned how when it comes to identity access management, personalization becomes very important. And in order to build out that personalized experience, you need to integrate with various different types of applications, legacy, on-prem, SaaS, et cetera. Uh, so, so that ability to extend the product has been one of its cornerstone and, and one of the reasons our developers love the product. And over the last few years, we've sort of gone through this journey of taking our on-prem 
identity access management capabilities to the cloud with Ascardio primarily, which is our multi-tenant SaaS. Now, while we're building Ascardio, we realize that there are so much more we can offer the developers through the UIs and etc. so that they are much more productive, much more faster in implementing those capabilities. So we brought those learnings into Identity Server 7. And if, if any of our existing users or community tries out Identity Server 7, you'll immediately see a vastly improved UI experiences. Uh, experience where developers, as one of the things is developers would have pre-built application templates so they can just use those and start building out, integrating those applications and so on and so forth. Uh, and next, uh, one feature that is, is very exciting and, and looks really cool is the ability for developers to visualize the login flow that and login journey that they're building using what we call the visual editor, right? A visual logging editor. And, and while they sort of use a, a low code sort of method to build out that login journey, they can also see the code that's being built uh, uh, in the back end uh, alongside that as well. Uh, so, you know, we brought in a lot of features and capabilities like that to improve the developer experience further. Yeah, that's brilliant. Sounds really compelling. Um, Sanjeeva Geetika mentioned IAM for B2B use cases. That's obviously taking on a lot more importance in today's day and age. Um, can you give us your thoughts on the, where this is heading uh, within the company? Sure. Um, B2C, where, where a business sells directly its customers to consumers, really consumers directly accessing a system, or B2E, where a business is talking, where employees are accessing a system, have been sort of the... Um, the foundational identity problems for a very long time. B2B takes it to the next level where I'm selling a digital product to a business and then that business has access granted to their employees, their customers or possibly another business. So then becomes B2B to B to B to another customer or an, uh, or an employee. So creating a, facilitating the management of identities for these relatively complex scenarios where I'm selling a product to you and you're a company and except that you are a company, so a company doesn't use a product, it's your employees or your customers who are using the product. So then you have to manage their access rights and access capabilities. Earlier was very complicated with Asgardio and Identity Server version 7. This is a, a very built-in straightforward situation where you subscribe to the product that I'm selling as a business and you can delegate the authorization access management to your sub-entities or, or you can control things and so on. So the, the B2B is very much the next frontier, so to speak, of identity access management because everybody then can offer capabilities in a much more decentralized, delegated way and take care of security in the levels of policies that you want to have. Um, Kitika, can we get into some of the B2B SIAM capabilities of Identity Server 7 a little bit more? Sure. Um, so when it comes to B2B SIAM, we're talking, as Sanjay mentioned, it's it's an organization that's providing uh, an application or service that's to, being provided primarily to a business, another business. We're talking about a B2B SaaS application, B2B application, and depending on the industry and the vertical that organization is, the capabilities that are required for that B2B SaaS application differs. Here we are talking about a bank running a corporate banking application. The requirements there are different to another, say, a high-tech organization that's building a SaaS platform uh, from a technology perspective, they're doing a technology service. The capabilities that are required there sort of differ. In our case, we are actually proud of and excited about having released a comprehensive set of B2B SIAM capabilities, which organizations can choose depending on the industry vertical and their sort of requirements from B2B SaaS perspective. Uh, we also go on to sort of bucket these capabilities that we have depending on how useful, how it becomes useful to that uh, organization de deploying the B2B SaaS application. First, it's a set of features that empower your developers in building the B2B SaaS application. Secondly, it's a set of features that help enhance that custom experience of your B2B SaaS enterprise customers. And finally, capabilities that will help optimize the digital operations of your B2B SaaS platform. So going one step further, uh, let's talk about capabilities that 
will enhance your developer experience or the experience of your developers building out the B2B SaaS, right? Firstly, it's uh, the ability for the developers to define the organization hierarchy depending on the business use case, whether it's B2B, B2B, B2C, multiple levels of hierarchy going to B to B to B and so on and so forth. And then the ability to model each enterprise customer as its own separated organization. This was previously, you know, referred to as tenants. Uh, but here you use organizations as a new terminology that we, which is something that's much more lightweight and nimble uh, than a tenant. Um, and then in a, in a case where there are multiple B2B applications, a suite of B2B applications, the way to provide single sign-on across these applications, thus providing the end user of enterprise customers uh, a unified experience. Uh, ability to define roles uh, across these applications, uh, which eventually our customers can assign users to. And then finally, developer tooling, whether it's API, SDKs, templates, workflows, so on so forth, that the developers can utilize to expedite the development uh, process of this B2B SaaS application. The second set of features are targeted at your enterprise uh, or improving the experience of your enterprise customers. It first starts off with delegated administration so that your enterprise customers themselves can define the, the life cycle of their users, right? Define how the, their users authenticate into the platform, whether they just come and plug an enterprise identity provider or whether they, uh, you know, sign in through MFA uh, or, and so on and so forth. So basically define that customized login flow. Uh, managing entitlements, uh, in, in the previous set of features I spoke about how the developers of the platform, the B2B SaaS platform can define roles. In this scenario, it's about empowering your customers to be able to assign their users to these specified roles. Right? Uh, and then you can provide your enterprise customers with the ability to you know, self white label or brand the authentication and login pages, the email templates and so on and so forth on a per organization or per enterprise customer level. And finally, uh, in some level of collaboration uh, where their customers and partners can, uh, can collaborate on a cost enterprise level um, as, as required. Right? So those are a bunch of features that will help enhance the experience of your enterprise customers, the enterprise customers of the B2B SaaS platform. Right? And finally, it's a set of features that empower your, uh, you know, you in the operations or managing operations of your B2B SaaS platform. Uh, it's all about integrations, integrations into uh, third-party applications, CRM, subscription services, so on and so forth, uh, and having, uh, providing application subscription capabilities to your end customers so they can you know if you have a suite of applications they you can define you know a process in which they can subscribe and they have different monetization policies around it uh, ability to uh, govern, govern the level of assurance uh, uh, as as required and then mandatory access delegations as needed and finally audits and insights into the overall operations usage of your B2B SaaS platform uh, from authentication standpoint especially. So all these capabilities are now available as part of our B2B SIAM uh, capabilities on Identity Server 7. So uh, obviously I'm going through this at a very high level, uh, but if you really go into the product uh, and, and, and we can have further conversations, we are open to have more conversation on that, we have very in-depth capabilities to help any organization be successful in building out and delivering their B2B SaaS platform. Okay, amazing. Um, you mentioned our in-depth capabilities. One of the things you, we spoke about earlier was um, the new authentication API, which allows uh, app-native browserless authentication. Can you talk to us a bit about that? Yes, uh, this has been a requirement uh, that has come up from our customers and, and from the community at large. 
uh, usually sometimes when you're logging into say a native mobile application and and when you're logging in you'd see have this experience where you there's a browser that's being brought up even on the mobile app and, and sometimes you may not really realize it but it's actually taking you to a web browser and you're authenticating there and once authentication is complete you're being brought back onto your mobile application uh, in many cases, this ends up providing uh, a very disconnected and disjointed user experience. Uh, so with this new uh, API authentic authentication API, we are able to provide that uh, login experience within that mobile app itself, making sure that that uh, you know login and authentication experience for that user is seamless uh, and, and, and straightforward. Fantastic. And um, another one of the things, the capabilities you mentioned earlier was the new financial grade API security. Um, it's obviously a high priority for a lot of organizations at the moment. Can you talk us through how that fits into Identity Service 7? Yes. So uh, if you're, you know, if any of the listeners are not uh, aware of this, uh, WSO2, we've, over the years, we had this very strong capabilities that we built out and solution we built out for open banking. Right? Uh, and as part of this, and, and basically this open banking solution was backed, uh, the underlying products uh, were our WC2 platform uh, offerings with its ident server, API manager, enterprise integrator, and so on and so forth. And we built this solution on top of these. Uh, while we were building this open banking solution, there are a few capabilities that we you know, brought in for those open banking requirements. One of which is the support for financial grade APIs or FAPI uh, and, and FAPI one dot or uh, in this case, and uh, we've now brought these capabilities, FAPI one, or support for FAPI 1.0 into Ident Server 7. So uh, all those consent-based uh, requirements, API uh, requirements are now available with Ident Server 7, and soon we are hoping to get uh, support for FAPI 2.0 as well. Great. Um, Sanjeeva, this question is for you. We've always had a very strong commitment to our open source roots and our open source community. Um, the new release of IS7 is also available as an open source download. Um, can you go through some of the features and capabilities and how it compares to, say, our other um, SaaS products in Asgardio and Private Identity Cloud? Sure. Yeah, open source is, is very, very fundamental and important uh, for us um, for multiple reasons. One is... Uh, that's how we enter the market as a company. That's how we compete in the market. That's how we establish our brand as a company that is committed to open source. Uh, and that's been an unwavering commitment for now 18 plus years. And we have, we see no reason uh, to move away from any of that commitment. So all the functionality that we have in the product is available 100% open source. We don't do any of this sort of child edition version where you have some crippled functionality of open source. In our case, everything is available as open source. We believe in it because open source is also an important part of independence, software independence for any organization, for any country, for any, any level of abstraction. Having control of the software gives you a lot of power where the vendor can't, can't dictate the terms to you fully. If we are not giving you a reasonable price support, you can always choose not to have support or you can choose to find somebody else because the code is available free of charge. Uh, co code is fully there. What you're running is with you. Uh, a, so we, we are very committed to open source and being uh, and, and with Identity Server versus Ascardio, which is its SaaS cousin, essentially all the functionality that is in Ascardio is coming from the Identity Server version. Obviously, Ascardio has some additional things related to billing and some stuff that is not relevant to the product, that is not, therefore, not in the open source version of the product. But all the functionality of everything Geeks mentioned about FAPI or B2B capabilities, all of that is completely the same. So that, that sits in line with the way we think about open source and why open source is important and the confidence and the commitment we are making to our customers about open source. Fantastic. Um, amazing, guys. So many great things happening within the IAM space at WSO2. Uh, lots to be excited about and um, really found this insightful and appreciate you guys taking the time today. Uh, look forward to seeing you both at WSO2Con and hearing more about IAM and uh, the future of digitization. Thank you both. Thank you.